Hi you guys, so fertilization day four and we have recovered quite a bit from the deer damage. Got a decision to make. We need to figure out if we're gonna pull the cabbages. The miracle Grow one seems to be doing okay. I'm gonna take the fence down and we'll talk about it maybe. But these are just getting shaded out, man. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned. Let me pull down these fences, and we're also going to do some trimming today and fertilize. So, here we go. All right, so here we are with the fences down. So let's take a look at each bad boy and a little discussion here. Let's get you closer. So here's our control. The uh, tomatoes got nibbled by the deer, remember? Like right there. But they're making a comeback, which is awesome. So that looks good. Uh, zucchini also got nibblized, but it's also making a comeback. But I'm going to come in here and uh, clip off the uh, dying and dead leaves. Uh, so you know squash always does this. The oldest leaves do die. They do need to be removed. I mean, if you don't remove them, it's not going to kill anything. But it's going to slow down the production of the plant because it's too busy trying to repair leaves instead of making new growth. Okay, here is our beans, also nibbled, but it looks like we're getting some blooms here. And here is that poor uh, cabbage that got nibbled on and it's, it ain't doing well. So there's that. miracle Grow uh, also got nibblized, but the uh, zucchini is making a fine comeback here. So that's one of the tops that got nibbled but we've got some fruit setting uh, we've got some other coming on cabbage is rocking and rolling in here it's taking over though so this is another reason so here it's dying here it's taking over here I mean should I pull them let's vote let me know should I pull them or should I just leave them be because it is going to shade out this green bean of course the green beans don't have that much longer before they're not producing anyway, but I do have, uh, let me get it in the shade. I do have production here, so we'll pull these off and we'll weigh them. I'll, uh, anytime anything's ready to be harvested, I'll pull it off and I'll weigh it and I keep track of all of that for end of the year production. Tomato, uh, also got nibbled. I don't know if you can see that there. And, um, I'm going to go come in and prune the lower limbs off because that's what I do to my tomatoes. And now, I mean, check it out. Look at these plants compared to those. It's like a whole different garden. So here's the urine only. Uh, this baby is ready for harvesting. Let's back up a little bit so you can see more. Uh, and we have many flowers and we've got two more coming on. Cabbage is here in the middle. Uh, bugs have been at it. Um, I'm wondering if that's partially because of the urine. Although I don't water the top of these, I, I water, um, you know, in the ground. So I'll also pull off the dead leaves. Uh, tomatoes looking good. I'll come in here, and this is some sunburn. Come in here and clip off the errant lower branches. Uh, the zucchini, I'll do the same. Some of them are dying off. Green beans getting some blooms, but um, no beans yet, right? So the miracle Grow is definitely winning that production here. And then look at the size of these leaves on this zucchini, and they're everywhere, right? They're all in here. We left the clover um, in this section because we definitely wanted pollinators. Um, it just doesn't grow over there, but we know bees travel up to a mile, so I don't think that's a big deal. So we've got, this one goes to that plant. But, so we've got these huge leaves, zucchini for harvest, uh, maybe another day or two. Little one coming on, um, more in production. Cabbage, I th again, should we pull it? I think we should. Tomatoes looking awesome. And over here in the corner, we got our green beans and uh, getting pushed aside by the zucchini a little bit. Beginning like pre-flowering, but not flowering yet. 
And then we've got these dead lower branches. I'll go ahead and remove those. So I'll come in here and uh, trim, trim it all up and I'll give you a look before the fences go back up. And let me know if you think I should go ahead and pull the uh, cabbages. I think I should. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know. Okay, back to work. All right, so now I'm done trimming. And I've got these little white pieces of paper out here to show what I've harvested from each plot. So this is what I trimmed from the control, and I have nothing to harvest. Miracle Grow, I did more trimming, more plants, more trimming, and we got three green beans, and I'll weigh and measure it and write it on my piece of pepper on the clipboard. My urine, even more trimming, and that's part of the trimming too, and we got a zucchini, and then the urine with wood ash zucchini, and not quite as much trimming because these zucchini leaves are actually doing pretty well. I did, I'm going to jump subjects on you. I'm going to talk about uh, soil pH for a minute. Uh, again, just as a reminder, all the soil came from the same source. Um, and the, obviously the containers are all this, um, were the similar containers. They came from the same lot. They had soy sauce or something in, in them. Uh, and one of my viewers said, uh, you know, fertilizer has acid, or excuse me, has salt in it. All fertilizers have salts. And keeping them in a container can increase the salt. You know, you're in a controlled space. She said it a little differently, but that's what I got out of the uh, information. And, and that can mess with your soil pH. So I've decided to add to my list of stuff to measure not only um, food, but also soil pH. And as you can see here, all my pHs are right about the same, 6.75. Optimal for a garden is about 6.5. I use a, a pH meter like this, and I measured all of them. What's interesting is the idea of the salts, right? that makes the soil, I had to write this down, the uh, salts make the soil more acidic and they raise the pH, or lower the pH. But wood ash makes it more alkaline and increases the pH. So, of course, it depends on amounts, but I'm wondering if the urine with wood ash doesn't have a pH variation because one is rising the pH and one is lowering the pH. I don't know. But then you would think that the urine by itself would have a different pH, but it doesn't. However, you know, we're still in early days. What is this, my third, uh, fourth fertilization? I'll write that down somewhere. So anyway, let me know what you fellow scientists think about this as my very unscientific uh, experiment continues. So I'll go ahead and measure these out, weigh them out, and um, next time... We're back. We'll check in and see where we are. So thanks for watching and let me know if you have any questions.